fish, fish. Oh, I had a bite. Dang it. I had a bite there. All right. Well, I'm going to come back there in just a sec. I'm going to fish a little bit further downstream. There's a bite. Didn't get it. At least there's one in here. I'm going to let him forget about that. Not see a bug for a while. Try and get a little bit closer so I can get a more natural drift. He's right up against that big boulder there. Okay, see if I can get him. This is right where he was. No bite that time. Darn it. Might have missed him. There he is. Got him. Got him. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Nice fish. All right. Got him on the double nymph rig. That's a beautiful fish. Come on, buddy. Got him. Check that out. Yeah. Really nice fish. He hit this. He hit the second nymph, the one on the bottom. Look at that. Really pretty fish. Hit that little beadhead nymph. Awesome. Get him going. Yeah, you know, for this high water and picking apart this pocket water, these double nymph rigs are great because using the float, you can really work it in there. Let's see if there's another one in there. I was just walking downstream with my float just hanging downstream of me, and I just got hit. Woo! Yeah! That's crazy. I was just starting to retrieve it across the river, and one came up and smacked it. Also on the bottom nymph. Really using that current. Yes. You know a rig is deadly when you catch fish on it accidentally. All right. Man, beautiful fish. Another nice fish. Awesome. There we go. Another pretty rainbow on the double nymph rig. Sweet. Yeah, I just had it right here. It came up in this tail out here and just smashed it. Okay guys, I want to show you how I set up this rig. So at the top I'm going to use a weighted bobber. This is the Billy Bobbers. They're a foam bobber with a lead weight in the bottom. You can also use water bobbers, especially if um, the water's really clear and low. You don't want to spook the fish as much. Uh, but it's high spring runoff right now, so I'm running the Billy Bobber. Okay, then from the Billy Bobber, you're going to run down. I'm on it using a four pound leader. It's hard to see there. Four pound. Then I come down to my first fly, which here I got a big stone fly pattern on. This is your anchor fly. You want to run your heaviest fly on the top. And this is the fly that's going to help plunge it down to where those fish are feeding on nymphs in the bottom. And then I just tie into the eye of the hook there like normal with any knot you would normally use. But you want to tie in your heaviest fly here on the anchor. Then from your anchor fly, I'm going to run another foot and a half, two foot down to a smaller fly. Now this can be a beadhead fly. This can be, I'm using a little uh, caddis nymph. Um, this can be a little beadhead or it can be unweighted. It's up to you. I recommend unweighted if the water is really low and clear. And then you go with a little bit lighter anchor fly and that will make it so you're not getting hung up. But basically you want this anchor fly to go down and bounce along the bottom and then this lighter fly is going to be rolling in behind it. And a lot of times they're going to take the smaller fly, but occasionally you'll get one on the anchor fly. So that's why it's nice to run two. That's it. And how I tie in the second fly is I literally just tie it right into the eye of the fly that's on the top, the anchor fly. But you can tie it off the bend of the hook, but I prefer to tie it into the eye I just tend to uh, do better that way. Also, because I'm running barbless, if I tie into the to the other fly there, sometimes it'll slip off. So um, if you're fishing barbed, you probably can tie off the bend a little bit more frequently. That's it. 
So this is a double nymph rig being rigged on spinning gear. And the key here is that there's not enough weight in the flies to cast. You'd have a weighted bobber, either of these billy bobbers, which work great. Phil makes some weighted bobbers, and so does, um, and or alternatively, you can use water bobbers. I don't think there's one over here. See if we can't find it. Okay, here we go. Try and keep a no slack in that line so I can set the hooks. Last time I was just swinging this across here and I got a fish like right where that bobber is now. And I was just getting ready to retrieve it and boom, he hit it. All right, we're getting into a little bit more mellow water here. We're gonna work that far bank and then we're also gonna work tight to the bank. And I can feel that heavy stone fly that I have on the top just banging on the bottom, which is what I want, because that means the other one's just sort of rolling along the bottom where those trout are holding. Now I'm going to work this side of the bank tight to me. So I'm going to work both sides of the bank the seam. You want a nice vertical presentation so you can feel those flies banging along the bottom, because sometimes a fish is not going to be willing to come up and take a fly near the surface. So you want to give them opportunity to hit one that's rolling along the bottom. I'm gonna go upstream a little bit. If I can get this line above this woody debris, I did. It's a good drift. Oh, I thought I had a bite. I didn't. Oh, he <laughs> hit the bobber. Did you see that? He went for the bobber. What a dork. Okay, there's a fish here, but he tried to hit the bobber, not the flies. That happens a lot when I'm fishing with water bobbers, but I've never had it happen with a big foam bobber. This guy right in front of me. It might be really deep, so I'm going to push it a little bit deeper. See if I can't uh, get him to bite. Since I know he's in here. We're going to go right back through here. So it looks like this pool is going to deepen up anyway. Let's see if we can't get some fish just dredging the bottom here. There he is, got him. Got him, got him, got him. <laughs> I missed my handle on the reel. Yep, just by setting that a little bit deeper, I was able to pull this fish out. Nice. Catching all of them on the bottom fly, so. The anchor fly, the top fly, is actually just, just there really to pull down that other fly and maybe grab their attention. That's great. Oh, there he goes. He's off. Cool. There we go. Got one. Come here, buddy. Little guy. What? This might be a native cutthroat. Let me see. Come here, buddy. Yes, yeah, a native cutthroat. That's cool. Come on. There he goes. He's off. Yeah, that's cool. There are not many of them up here is really deep so we might even need to go with some split shot here we'll try without split shot if we don't get anything then we will uh switch out then we'll go ahead and add some split shot and see if we can't really get down here this i mean this thing's probably 20 feet deep can't get all the way to the bottom but i want to make sure those flies get in that strike zone we'll start at like seven or eight feet Takes a long time for the flies to get down there. There we go. Got one. 
This is a nice one. Yeah, right there by the bank. <laughs> cool. Pretty fish. Oh, he's a long leader. It's hard to land him. Man, I'm fishing barbless hooks too, so. Let's see if we can get one here. There we go. There we go. That one. Oh, he's off. Dang it. That's a bummer. Just had him on for a second. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch out to the spoon. The top of this pool, I hooked into a rainbow but lost it. But what I want to illustrate here is that it's when I come out trout fishing, you want to have a diversity of tools, and the double nymph rig is just one of those tools. It works really good for moderately deep water, you know, four to six feet. It has some current where you can really just hang those flies in that pocket water. But in these deep pools, it, they have too long to look at it. They don't have that reaction strike time. I tend to do poor, so I'm gonna try. I just saw a big trout jump right there. I'm gonna try with a uh, spoon, see if I do better. Went on the double nymph rig down here when I first got here. I'm gonna go throw a spoon through here and don't get anything. I'm gonna call it for the day, but had a pretty good day. Caught caught a good number of trout. Let's see if we can find any more hungry trout in here. There's a bite. Got him. Yep. <laughs> there he goes. Just a little, little guy. Saw him come up for it. The spoon is half the size of him. Ooh, that was a nice fish. There's another one. A lot of these really young fish in here. They love these spoons. I'm looking for the big fish. There we go. That feels a little better. Little rainbow. Come here, buddy. Yes. Yeah, like they really wanted the spoons in the afternoon. These are mostly fish they put in here to to grow. Oh no, this. Oh, this is a cutthroat. Look, look at the cutthroat right there. Yeah, this is a native fish. There you go, buddy. See ya. All right, no bites. Just some little cutthroats at the end of the day. I'll put links to the bobbers and stuff that I use and some of my favorite flies uh, in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye.